I'm here with John from Paizo, and you've been with this company for a long time and through a lot of development with Pathfinder, and uh, we're going to find out all about that today. Uh, you've got a board game out, mm -hmm. Elemental Stones, and uh, one thing that I'm, I'm asking of you for my audience is to tell me, how would I get into Pathfinder if this is something completely brand new to me? Sure. So Pathfinder 2nd uh, Edition is really nicely streamlined to make it a lot easier to jump into the game. Uh, it has some, um, the streamlined rules are things like three action economy. So you get three actions a turn. Is it a verb? It is probably an action. So nice. if you want to move, move, attack, that's fine. Attack, attack, attack. Okie dokie. Uh, jump, kick, jump, jump. Jump, kick open the door, shoot a crossbow. All right. Um, so it makes a really nice fluid sort of gameplay. Um, and a lot of your other things are just going to slowly add up as incremental bonuses. It's very hard to build a bad character so you don't feel like there are trap options. It, and one of the great things about Pathfinder is that we really thrive on customizing your characters. So you have all your little ancestry feats so your dwarf can evolve in different ways and make different choices to become more dwarfy. Your, your uh, champion will gain champion feats over time and you can take in all sorts of different directions. There are archetypes you can slap on top of any class to make something completely different. So you want your champion to be like, I am a lawful, I'm a totally good sort of person. Slap the assassin archetype on him. I'm not stopping you. Um, so you can do all sorts of different things. We have all these ancestries. We have versatile heritages that you can slap new little templates on top of your existing ancestry. So if you want to be a goblin with the grave walker uh, or dusk walker uh, versatile heritage where you are kind of like a, a, a living dead sort of being who uh, is a, a shepherd for lost souls. Okay. If you want to be a tiefling and not be human base? Okay. Whatever. So it sounds like there's a lot of room for people to bring their own creativity to it, but also there's a system in place to help them find a direction wherever Absolutely. they want to take it. Absolutely. And That's amazing. Okay. So what when it, comes, when it comes to uh, starting off newer to tabletop RPGs, yep. I have this uh, Pathfinder beginner box. So the beginner box products for Pathfinder and Starfinder are ones that are really designed to get people's foot in the door for tabletop RPGs. Okay. Um, so when it comes to somebody who may have played a couple years in other games, you probably don't need to do this. But if you are have been doing all board games, for example, or collectible card games, and you're like, I want to try out tabletop RPGs, but that's a lot of books over there. Um, this can be a really good onboarding point. Does anybody well, use this with kids? Absolutely. In fact, one of the best things about this is that we basically take the existing rule set and we slim it down. So we remove some of the more complicated options. We uh, kind of compile a couple of skills and whatnot to make it something that's really easy to pick up and play. Um, so this is fantastic for kids. Um, we've also okay. used this for like one of our programs called Pathfinder Society Academy, which is one of our organized play programs, but designed for kids play, especially conventions like this. One of our past campaign coordinators was basically, like, is, it was a parent who was like, you know, when parents come to conventions, you're you know, kind of like dragging around the six-year-old was like, right. I need you to stand here while I play this five-hour scenario. Don't uh, cause trouble. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, why not give them something really cool to do and something that brings them into the hobby? It's a great idea. There's a hack for you if you want to survive Gen Con with kids. Absolutely. Get them involved in the gameplay. So um, the other great thing about the beginner box is that it's an all-inclusive thing. So it includes uh, a map for a pre-written adventure in here. It has pre-printed characters that you can just open the box and play, nice. but also blank characters so you can build your own. So if you have reluctant kids who maybe have never tried and are like, this is stupid, I don't want to play this, uh, that's a, an entry point. It's a great entry point. Brilliant. So that's okay. one way of getting in. And you've got a player's core here. So this would be leveling up from that previous system? Absolutely. So this is basically the... Second uh, edition. This is second edition. So if you want to get into Pathfinder second edition, this is kind of the main book to have. Okay. Um, so we have four different books that have core in the name of it. And it mm. kind of creates a general constellation of things we have built off of from there. Player core is all you really need to play. There's a GM core that helps you game master things. There's a monster core full of all sorts of stat blocks. And there's a player core too, which is just this, but more options. So, um, but player core will get you started. And it has all the classes and ancestries that you need. Um, it has knowledge about how to use skills, how to choose different feats, a lot of the base spells, and just a sense of how to play the game. Now, how big should my sack of dice be in order to play Pathfinder? Is this a small sack or a large one? Uh, generally grows as your character gains levels. Okay. So when you start off, you can basically play with one of each size die, so the set of seven. Um, as you gain levels, depending upon what you're playing, you'll probably add about maybe three dice of certain sizes, and if you're playing a spellcaster, you might add, you know, you don't go full shadow run, but you right. might add another, like, dozen D6s. I gotta um, tell you, the lineups here are insane. There are so many people who are buying 
everything they can find of this. So very cool. You get a preview here. Now there's one last thing I'd like uh, to cover, and that's you've got Pathfinder Elemental Stones. And I think uh, for people who already know our content, this yeah. might be another access point. Um, in what ways is this similar? Where, where, where are the points of connection? And tell me a little bit about the game. Yeah, so for the past couple of years, uh, Pathfinder, or sorry, Paizo has had a very small board game division within our company, building out a couple of these games. So you uh, may have also encountered uh, Goblin Fireworks Fight that okay. is a great little party, like beer and pretzels sort of level game nice. uh, that we came out with about two or three years ago. Elemental Stones is the newest of these. So this is developed by uh, Jason Bullman and Joe Pacini in-house, and it is riffing on some of our Elemental Planes themes that we've played with in some of our recent books. So when you play this game, you're going to get uh, dealt one of these random Elemental Lord character cards, and a little bit like, um, oh, crumbs, uh, Lords of, uh, of Waterdeep. Of Waterdeep. Yes. It's a secret. Okay. So they don't know quite what it is, but it is one of your scoring cards. You're also going to be given some pattern cards and some objectives in the start of your game. So a pattern or an objective card is another one that is telling you, here's something that you want to accomplish by the end of the game, and if you do, here are the points you're going to get. Okay, pattern nice. cards are ones that, and of course, those are again, not being shared with the player. So you are slowly building out the uh, board in a way that you're manipulating and they don't know why okay. until they can sort of intuit and you're like, they're doing a lot of metal actions. They, they're up to something. Oh, um, so it's a bit of a deduction game as well. Absolutely. And so the game plays by uh, giving you three actions per turn to uh, place down some tiles, to place down a tile that will change it into the next thing in the elemental cycle. So you kind of go around the board so water can turn into wood or metal sort of thing. Oh, very cool. Uh, so you're okay. slowly changing the configuration of the board, and as you gain, as you play these pattern cards to say, I have achieved this shape. Oh, very nice. I'm really going to use one of my actions to play it, and now I get these eight points that are on the card oh, perfect. that contribute okay. to my final score. And now I put this to the side for scoring. So I was picturing this was going to be a game that if a character in Pathfinder walked into a tavern, characters would be playing this game, but it sounds like it's more a spin-off theme that sort of reflects the um, the elements of the game and, and some of those uh, so this this is a totally separate audience. This this uh, is a separate audience. Although your point about it could be a thing you find in the tavern, not off the table. Okay. Um, yep. It's, but yeah, so you don't need to, world, yeah. you don't need to know anything about the Pathfinder universe or gameplay to play this game. Um, and to an extent, the same is true for one of our upcoming products. So we have Pathfinder Quest, which is our next uh, board game system that is coming soon. Register trademark. Um, but that is going to be more of a narrative board game approach to the Pathfinder experience. Um, um, so, a little bit, almost like a little bit of Hero Quest. Although that's okay, kind of a, it's yes. a, that's a crude comparison, but <laughs> that's that, that, that style of thing. Well, John, I really appreciate all your time showing us everything today. Um, and where can they find all of this if they are watching this video? Yes, yeah, so they can find this on Paizo.com. Uh, we have all of our product pages that you can order online. You can also find the vast majority of stuff in your friendly local game store. Um, and in addition to that, if you ever want to be introduced to Pathfinder or Starfinder, uh, there's also our organized play programs, which are ways of playing single session games and fully building up your characters. And the volunteers are all across the world running games in all sorts of different stores and locations, and they're always happy to bring in new players and teach you how to play the game. That's amazing. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Now get out there, get gaming, and be legendary. Yeah.